So you've defeated Margaret the Fell Omen, and now you're heading into Stormvale Castle. Home to Godric the Grafted, this legacy dungeon has a ton of loot hidden behind its walls, and a ton of danger. Hello fellow Tarnished, I'm Stonebear13. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to get every single weapon, spell, collectible and the like found within Stormvale Castle. I'll even stop and give some extra information on the ones that truly stand out from the rest, but I won't be including any smithing stones, runes, or small pickups like that, because I gotta leave you guys something to find on your own. Now buckle up, it's gonna be a bit of a long one, as we head in to Stormvale Castle. Almost immediately upon entering your first room in this legacy dungeon, you'll be enticed over to a commoner. This is Gostok the Gatekeeper, and he advises against going through the front gate, saying that the side path is much safer. Aside from just looking and sounding suspicious, anytime you die within this dungeon, Gostok will steal 30% of your runes, regardless of if you take the side path or the front entrance. You can kill him, however, I wouldn't recommend doing that, as he is tied to a quest line later on in the game. For this video, we will be taking the side path, but I'll have a video coming out very soon on how to go through the front gate and run straight to Godric. Head outside and jump up the ledge to your right. Follow the path to the end of the broken wall and drop down to the grass below. Here, get ready to fight the Stormhawk perched on the tree to your west. Once defeated, Make your way through and grab yourself the Stormvale Cliffside Site of Grace. Head up the series of stairs and platforms, being sure to grab the marred leather shield on your way. Go through the tower and take out the commoners on the lower level. Don't go up the stairs. Instead, go north to the big room in the back. Defeat the exile with the great axe, and in the western corner, you'll find yourself the hook claws. This weapon comes with quick step and 60 base blood loss buildup. Plus, it can be infused with Ashes of War, and two-handing this equips one in each hand, allowing you to build up status effects very quickly. Heading up the stairs, you'll want to be wary of the commoners throwing fire pots at you, especially since you're so close to those explosive barrels. Take them out, and push forward to a door, which you'll find out is locked. Turn around and head up the stairs. Deal with the commoner throwing fire pots, and roll through the debris to find the staircase to move forward. Where you defeated the second commoner will be a door, and when you head inside, you'll quickly find out that you're trapped. After Gostok finishes cackling, you'll be swiftly attacked by a banished knight, who you're locked in the room with. Defeat him, and head to the north to find a chest. Inside will be the curved sword talisman. This talisman increases the damage of guard counters by 20%. And for those of you who don't know what a guard counter is, it's the attack that you make immediately after blocking a strike from an enemy while they're reeling from the recoil. Heading to the east, sitting on a corpse, we'll find ourselves the Rusty Key. This will allow us to unlock the door that we found earlier, and will also trigger Gostok to open his shop for us. Gostok doesn't have a ton within his shop, but he does have the Cestus, some bandit gear, and most importantly, the Buckler which has the Buckler Parry, one of the best parries in the entire game, and definitely worth the 1500 runes to pick it up. Back at the locked door, we'll use the rusted key to head inside and up the ladder. Up top, we'll start by going to the right, jump across, take out the two commoners, and go to the platform where the second commoner was standing. Jump across to the west and follow the path. When you get to the tower, pause for a moment and be ready as the crossbowman will try to kick you off the ledge. Dodge him and defeat him to loot yourself the Brick Hammer. Brick Hammer in hand will go back and climb up the ladder. This time, take a left, but be ready because there is a commoner here who will grab you and stab you in your spleen if you let him, so be sure to dodge him and take him out. Head outside and up the stairs to the tower. Inside, you'll find a banished knight, where you can either fight or sneak by. Either way, work your way up to the next level, and in the room to your left, you'll find the Rampart Tower Site of Grace. Heading outside, there's two main paths that we can take, either northwest towards the birds, or east to the rooftops. We'll start off by going east to the rooftops. Once you've made the jump, head over to the next rooftop to your south. 
deal with the armored Stormhawk that's waiting for you, and resting against the East Tower on the corpse, you'll find the Dozing Cross-Legged emote. Back over on the main rooftop, this time we'll climb up the pillar that's broken off to jump onto the ledge just above it. Following it around, we'll find ourselves a few enemies. Deal with them and head up the ladder. Up top, you'll find yourself the Claw Talisman, which gives you a 15% buff to all of your jumping attacks. There is going to be one more item to grab before we move on from the rooftops. Acting as if you're going to head over to the rooftop to the south, Stop in between them and take the ledge that's in front of you. Drop down to the next area below and move past the Banished Knight. Defeat the Exiles on the rooftop across the bridge and on the wooden platform you'll find yourself the Nomadic Warriors Cookbook 10, which will teach you how to make Stormwing Bone Arrows. Now that we're done jumping across rooftops, we'll head back to the Rampart Tower site of Grace and head towards the birds. These birds will throw explosive barrels at you, so be prepared for that. Once all three are defeated, you'll head over to the platform where the third bird was sitting. From here, jump up onto the wall to find a ledge that you can drop down to. From there, head northeast and drop down to the ledge below. Go to the broken tower to find yourself the marred wooden shield. Dropping down from the tower, we'll move over to the southern cliffside to find another area to drop to below us. The cliffside will break away causing you to fall down and most likely poop your pants, just like all of us did the first time. When you land, defeat the Scarab, and you'll be rewarded with the Ash of War, Storm Assault. This Ash of War can be applied to Twin Blades, Halberds, Heavy Thrusting Swords, Spears, and Great Spears. Moving forward, if the drop down to this area didn't scare you, perhaps the Crucible Knight that you're about to face will. When defeated, he'll drop the incantation Aspects of the Crucible, Horns. Requiring 27 faith and costing 18 FP per cast, this chargeable incantation is one of the three aspects of the Crucible incantations, and it actually deals some pretty decent damage. Following the path the Crucible Knight came from, we'll eventually come to a lift, and riding it up will take you right back to the Rampart Tower site of Grace. Outside, we'll head north following the path with the birds. Heading down the stairs, We'll cross over to the rooftop of the church and drop down the hole where the bell is. If you turn south and head into the cathedral, you'll meet Sorcerer Rajier, who will offer to sell you some Ashes of War. The three that he sells are by no means the strongest, but they're definitely worth checking out if you're looking for something new. Returning to the room you landed in, head to the east and then turn south to find yourself outside with a banished knight and an exile. Take them out and move forward into the next building. Progress till you find yourself back outside in a courtyard. Here, stop and turn to your left. Deal with the two dogs that are underneath the hanging giant's corpse and jump down. Atop the corpse pile in front of you, you'll find the Chrysalid Memento. This item can be given to Rodrika to progress her questline, which I will have a video coming out on in the very near future. From the corpse pile, exit the room and immediately take a left. Ride the lift up to find yourself once again at the Rampart Tower site of Grace. Now we could take the lift down from here, but the items that we need are a little easier to get to if we instead jump across the rooftop and then down onto the walkway that the Banished Knight and the Exile are patrolling. Head through the building back to the courtyard, and this time cross straight through and into the next room, where you'll find a large table and a Banished Knight. Defeat the Banished Knight and head up the platform to the northeast. Inside the chest, you'll find the Mimic's Veil. This allows you to change into random objects when used, which can come in handy in PvP when you're trying to hide from an invader. Exiting to the next room, we'll find ourselves in what I like to call the Grafting Hall. And this has a collection of both commoner and exile enemies, as well as a single grafted scion that you'll have to deal with. Underneath the platform you drop down from will be an exalted flesh, so melee users be sure to pick that up. When you defeat the grafted scion and have the room cleared out, Resting underneath the painting of Godfrey, you'll find yourself the Highland Axe. This axe deals some really high damage by itself. On top of that, it also has a secondary effect that buffs the effectiveness and projectile damage of all roars by 7.5%, stacking with the Roar Medallion, but unfortunately not with the second copy of itself. Back in the Grafting Hall, you'll head to the western corner and out the door. Take a left to find an imp seal statue waiting for you. Spend the stone sword key and head inside 
to take out the two exile that are waiting for you. You'll find yourself the Hawk Crest Wooden Shield, and along the same wall, you'll find yourself Misery Cord. This dagger has the highest critical damage rating out of any weapon in Elden Ring, and on top of that, it can be customized with Ashes of War, allowing you to play around with attribute scaling to tailor it to your build. Finally, if we head over to the fireplace, we'll also find the Iron Wet Blade, which will allow us to customize any Ash of War we put on our weapons with a heavy, keen, or quality affinity. Returning to the Grafting Hall, we'll head back to the picture of Godfrey and take a left. Moving forward, we'll find ourselves back outside and in a very large courtyard. Here you'll want to clear out all of the enemies so you can get to looting. Among the corpses in front of the barricades, you'll find the pike. And if you head to the archery tower over to the east, you'll find yourself the wooden great shield. Exit the archery tower to the north and head to the omen and his puppy. Take them out and enter the building immediately to their west. Inside, you'll find the prophecy painting. I will have a video with the locations of all of the paintings and their respective ghosts coming in the future, but for now, let's finish up in Stormvell Castle. Heading outside, you'll want to go north and up the stairs. Head into the building to find yourself the liftside chamber, Sight of Grace. In this room, the door to the west is locked from this side. However, if you head to the east, you can pull the lever and ride the lift up. Heading through the door, you'll take a right following the sound of the scarab. When you defeat it, you'll be rewarded with the Ash of War Stormcaller. This Ash of War can be applied to <gasps> straight swords, great swords, curved swords, curved great swords, katanas, twin blades, hammers, great hammers, axes, great axes, flails, spears, great spears, halberds, and reapers. Plus, it's been buffed in patch 1.07, increasing its attack speed, its radius, and its damage that it deals. Heading forward northeast, will come to the Site of Grace. This is the secluded cell, and the final Site of Grace before Godric the Grafted's boss fight. While we may be at the Fog Wall, it's not time to face the boss yet, as we do still have quite a few more items to run and go grab. Exiting the secluded cell, we'll head southwest across the hall and up the ramp. In the back of the room, hidden behind the living jars, will be two cracked pots. Turn around and head northeast, staying to the left of the ramp, when you reach the wall, jump onto the ledge and follow it around to the doorways. When you exit, take a right and head up the stairs. Take a left and head up the ramp. In the next building, you'll find yourself in a room full of commoners, and at the base of the staircase, you'll find the manor tower shield. Exiting the room to our west, we'll find a message left behind by Sorcerer Rajier. Follow the cliffs down to the south and go through the tower. When you exit, Make a left and follow the path to open the doorway that leads to the liftside chamber. Now that the door is open, you can exit and head back towards the tower we just came from. Jumping across to the platform nearby, we'll head down to the broken staircase, and before you drop down, be prepared for the two bats that will attack when you land. Once they're dealt with, you'll work your way over to the leftmost arch and follow it down to the platforms below. On the ground, you'll have a few small rats, and one really big one to deal with. Heading through the debris, you'll also find a scarab. When you defeat it, you'll be rewarded with the sorcery Rancor Call. Requiring 16 intelligence and 14 faith, this sorcery will cost you 12 FP per cast, and it can be charged to increase its damage output. Looking forward off the ledge, it might feel like it's a trap, and that's because it is. When you land, you'll immediately be assaulted by a quote unquote lesser ulcerated tree spirit. I can tell you this thing doesn't feel any lesser and it hurts me just as much. However, once you defeat it, you'll be rewarded with a golden seed and your share of the loot that's on the ground in the boss room. Once you're done looting the area, you'll want to move forward past the tattered cloth. When you do, you'll see a very strange looking object in front of you and to the south on a corpse, you'll find the Prince of Death's Pestule. This talisman will raise your vitality by a decent amount when you have it equipped. Also present in the immediate area is a bloodstain, and this bloodstain belongs to Sorcerer Rajier, who from this point forward won't be able to be found back at the church. And if you guys would like me to delve into some of the lore and explain a little bit of what's going on here, please be sure to let me know in the comments below. Heading to the northern corner of the room, we'll find ourselves a ladder. 
and it is in fact the largest ladder in the entire world. Once you reach the top and drop down off the ledge, you'll find yourself back in the grafting hall. Exiting the grafting hall into the courtyard, take an immediate left and head down the staircase. Exterminate the rats and use a stone sword key over at the imp seal statue to gain access to the next room. Inside the chest to your left, you'll find the God Slayer's seal, which gives a 10% boost to Black Flame, Black Flame Ritual, and Scouring Black Flame incantations. And in the right chest, you'll find the Godskin Prayer Book, which when delivered to an incantation trainer, will allow you to purchase the Black Flame and Black Flame Blade incantations. Exit the room to your south and immediately take a left. Drop down to the next area below and start eliminating all the Ballista operators moving to your south. Once they've all been taken care of, enter the building to the right of the gate to the southeast. Inside, you'll find a Sight of Grace, as well as the mechanism to open the front gate if you haven't already. Be careful resting at the Sight of Grace, as the Ballista operators will respawn, and they can potentially pin you in there. Exiting, you'll want to head north up the road and eliminate all of the exiles that stand in your way. At the top of the hill, turn to your east and head to the hall. As you approach, you'll be attacked by a Lion Guardian. Just keep running, as for whatever reason, he can't enter the hall, so you can just run straight through and grab the Sight of Grace on the other side. Since you're already there, you may as well head up the stairs and grab yourself the Bolt Drake Talisman resting on the left pillar, which will give you some lightning damage resistance when equipped. I do recommend eliminating the Lion Guardian, as he doesn't respawn, and like I said, he gets stuck from entering the hall, so you can cheese him down pretty easily. Once that's dealt with, head west and eliminate the three exile that are blocking your path. In the next area, stick to the left and jump up the cliffside. When you reach the platform that the exile was standing on, you can potentially be shot by the explosive ballistas that are guarding this area. So be sure that you bait them to shoot, dodge the explosion, and then run and jump across to the other side to your east. Jumping to the rooftop with the ballista, you'll eliminate the exile, head over to the corpse, and loot yourself, Arbalest. For our final items, we'll have to head back to the liftside chamber site of Grace. From there, exit to the east and head up the steps. Defeat the armored warhawks and the exile that's waiting for you, and at the base of the golden tree, you'll find a golden seed. The final point of interest is in the same general area, on the southern wall from where we got the golden seed. Head down the steps to be introduced to Nefeli Lu. Exhausting her dialogue not only starts her quest chain, it also allows you to summon her for your fight against Godric the Grafted, giving you some much needed help. And that's every major item and point of interest within Stormvale Castle. If this video has been helpful for you, please leave a like or a comment. And be sure to subscribe and click the bell so you can stay up to date on all of my upcoming Elden Ring content. Once again, I'm Stonebear13. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.